Well, you just brought up Brent Pry a little bit ago. Let's talk about him. I took him the 13th pick of the draft. What an absolute steal. Uh, I mean, the decision was between him and Tony Elliott, right? And I think the decision was pretty clear. You kind of got stuck, shafted there, if you will, with Tony Elliott. Brent Pry, I mean, going 7-6, and six, having basically around a top 50 offense, top 50 defense. And you're going to the next year, right? First of all, you had a chance to make the ACC title game basically with a couple of weeks left in the season, which is nuts. You saw an injection of life, Connor and Jones, um, in there at quarterback. You'd love to see that. And who was the back quarterback that, that you just got? Colin Schley. Colin motherfucking Schley. I think that is – I told Matthew. I like we, we were <laughs> talking the other day. I was there just like – I was like, dude – Fuck man, I'm all in on Virginia Tech. I mean, I know it's your backup quarterback, and I know it's not gonna, you know, maybe change the course of any given game. But I do think that matters. And what, what if you're taking the over on a team or taking them to, to future, right? Like you're gonna want stability if if all hell breaks loose and your quarterback goes down or whatnot. Colin Schley is that dude, man. He is that motherfucking dude. So I'll let you get into. He's it, just a similar play style, is what we'll say. So yeah, and anyways. I guess I was I was upset with the whole UCLA how it happened at UCLA. That's what I'll say. I was upset with that. that was <laughs> he, te- he was terrible. Yeah, but Kent State, Collinsley, was just dynamic, dynamic in the back. So Brent Pry finishes forty fifth in the recruiting rankings, which is not necessarily up to snuff in terms of Virginia Tech standards. However, however. I mean, in previous years, it, you have to go back to 2019 to see a top 40 class, right? So this is one of the better recruiting classes in the last couple of years, it's kind of similar to 2023, 2022. I just think, you know, the damage that was done to the program by Justin Fuente, which, by the way, I thought was going to work out there, you know, uh, yeah. it, it, it's going to take time to repair. But with the schedule that they have laid out this next year, which is in my opinion, one of the easiest schedules in the ACC, which makes it one of the easiest schedules in Power Five, you just they could win some ball games, man. I think twenty to one odds to win the the, the ACC is a sneaky bet. So I I really like that, and I like what Brent Pry's doing with this program, man. I think he's got some, it's kind of got the winning bug right now back into Virginia Tech's program, and you know maybe we could start to see some life there and. I think I would take Brent Pry in hindsight ahead of Jake Dickert. I think I would take him ahead of Billy Napier. So we drafted him at 13th. I probably wouldn't go higher than 10 if we were to draft this again. But still, uh, this was a stock that I bought when it was pretty low. And it's got some value now. Yeah, I think he's a guy um, that did a lot of things. I think he exceeded my expectations, right? Um, for Virginia Tech, and obviously, I, I think with everything returning, what he did retention wise was awesome. And then also in the portal, if you ask me, their biggest need is D tackle, interior defensive lineman. And you bring in two guys in the transfer portal, including Aeneas Pebbles, who, by the way, I think the industry is way, way, way too low on. I think he was awesome for Duke last year. He's gonna be a real game changer for the SEC. You bring in a guy from JUCO. You sign another freshman out of uh, the out of your recruiting class to really supplement that that roster and, and kind of fill that need, which was well done. Uh, backup quarterback was also a position of need. Uh, although I love, 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 um, uh, pop Watson, uh, their, their backup quarterback, but I think he's probably a year away from really being able to contribute meaningful snaps for you. So obviously Colin Shelley is, I do want to say their recruiting class on the surface. Yes. 45th is not great, but they only signed 16 guys. And if you're looking at like your averages, um, it's a lot better than um, what the, the the total composite number does kind of get inflated if you sign more players, which I, it should, obviously. But I think you only had 16 spots because you you brought back so many pieces. You didn't have many scholarships to go around for the high school ranks. Um, so that's part of it, too. And I do think you were you had some decommits late in the cycle. You were trying to flip some guys late in the cycle. And you, you couldn't quite close the deals on guys you got on campus of highly rated players. So I just think it's like it's almost there. You're right there. They like said you they're almost there in the SEC, the ACC title game in November. They were competing for. I think it's like right on the verge, right on the verge. Eventually, that dam I think is going to break with Brent Pry, and people forget. By the way, Vatek was a 
a damn good program, a damn good program in the 2000s. And I think that they can get back to that. Maybe not like elite, elite level where they're, you know, top 10 team consistently, but I still think they should be absolutely ranked year to year and be able to compete every couple of years for the ACC title game and at large bid in the playoffs or that, that um, automatic bid for the ACC. So yeah, Brent probably steal, steal with the second last pick in the draft.